Hey guys, Richard of Ryder in the Room here, doing my latest Star Wars book review. Um, this is kind of two in one, and I thought I fell a bit behind on the reviews for the New Jedi Order, and so, I mean, I know I did the other two parts separately, and it's got, I'll probably do the same with the three part that's eventually coming up, but this is for... Danger Mouse? <laughs> uh, this is for the two New Jedi Order books, uh, Rebel Dream and Rebel Stand, uh, from the Enemy Lines series. And really, they really do feel like it's the same story. Even the other ones were split fairly well, but I'm not sure we have a Star Wars. Pop that go up. Do you know, it's like my Mandalorian there. Uh, Darth Maul chain, uh, chamber. I thought it was a spoiler for Clone Wars here. Um, but hopefully uh, whoever's watching this will have seen this. I apologise not to mention that sooner. But yeah, it's just a Mandalorian chamber that they put like Force users inside on the show the clone wars and obviously way before that but yeah so on to the review so this is books one and two together and i um, don't worry the reason it's not gonna be like 20 minutes or long or anything it's not all that much to say to be honest um so yeah the last book before, before that dark journey which was all about jane that's good but i just felt it didn't have a good enough resolution really well written but it just kind of ended um not it doesn't really if, yeah it's obviously the story's still going on but i just thought it could have a bit of a better ending and same sort of thing really with these. Um, so, let me just double check. Yes, this is part one and this sort of had the same sort of thing happen. It's all about um, them, the re well, rebellion. <laughs> no, this is not Disney Star Wars. <laughs> this is all about the uh, New Republic having lost Coruscant in uh, Star by Star uh, on nearby planet Bo uh, Bole, I think it's pronounced. And yeah, they basically using that as their base. It's kind of close enough to the Republic, uh, sort of Coruscant, like hyperspace lanes, all of that for them to like, basically be there safely, but still close enough to that insight that he's no longer to attack them. And that's kind of what this is about. You've got that like, effects on the pilots. I mean, it's Alan Elliston who does the um, Wraith Squadron books and then three of the Legacy of the Force books. So yeah, he is, he's good at combat. And that's a lot of what this is. Space combat, like stop News and Vong, um, in space, and then of course on that going to Coruscant as well. So you got more things. You got like Jaina Solo leading her own squadron, like much like before. Her her part is to like trick these and Vong into mock, like mocking them. Her like a trickster goddess or something, which like these and Vong's obsession with twins, Jason and Jaina. Jason is still like prisoner, and Jaina can't sense him, but believes he's dead. But Leia doesn't believe it because she felt Anakin's death and doesn't feel like. He's died. She believes she would have felt it. But yeah, they're kind of like the Yuuzhan Vong obsessed with twins. Like there's two separates. E.g., Jason. It was like perhaps the good side twin where Jane is the dark side twin because in uh, Dark Journey she was giving into the dark side, you know, casting Force lightning, uh, 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 like hatred for the Yuuzhan Vong, etc. And yeah, they they're two gods, so seen as two sides as well. And she's like the trickster goddess. So yeah, they she kind of formed her own squadron doing like these tricks to basically enrage the Yuuzhan Vong to help defeat them. And then you've got the others, like, they're, like, setting up, like, super weapons, etc. Um, and then the other plot, really, along with, like, Kip and Jaina being in Squadron. Um, Jaina starting a relationship with um, the guy who'd been raised by the Chiss, which is pretty cool. I'm hoping he, like, survives this series. Um, you've got Luke, Mara Jade, and a few others going on to Coruscant. They managed to, like, sne like sneak on during the space battle and see what's happening. Yeah, the Yuzan Vong are changing it. They're <laughs> turning it into, like, their own world. They've got, like... The parts you see, there's like pl still plenty of like natives around. You don't have to kill everyone yet. And there's not enough angry citizens who aren't standing for this. But um, yeah, they're doing something to comments. I don't know what exactly what it is, but it's uh, pretty grim. They're like, clearly like uh, changing the planet, like terraforming it, bio bioforming. I don't know what you'd call it, but it's clearly not going to be the same. I don't know if they're trying to make it into like their own home world or some giant breeding planet. But you can see they wanted Coruscant, clearly not just for like the billions of life forms on that planet so yeah i'm of course seeing how that goes but yeah there's also like luke goes there pretty much because he senses like this huge source of dark side power and there's this like sort of former like f like i don't know he's, i think he's a dark jedi he's like someone who's basically been like injured and then like implanted like kind of like general grievous in the prequels um but he's not a cyborg but he's definitely well i suppose he is he's got lots of like implants and stuff and yeah he's this source of like extreme power and yeah luke goes there because he can sense that um Again, spoilers only for up to this book because I'm the previous EU and films before here, but nothing after. So, don't even though I've started reading uh, the next book, Traitor, um, I won't mention anything from that one at all. This is only up to the end of these, but yeah, eventually Luke, Marjay, Tahiri, uh, and then like the scientists they've got. I mean, Danny is more scientist than Jedi, but they they win, they stop the creature, 
Um, oh, and Vicky Sesh, the senator who was like in League of the Years Among, finally dies. It's uh, quite great. It's quite a bit amusing how she decides, like, she's got no chance. She finally realises it. She decides she'd rather kill herself than rob the Years Among or even the New Republic of killing killing her. So yeah, thank God she's finally dead. She absolutely deserved it for the things she's done. I'm, I'm just trying to read these books. They're like, the piece of grade are just... They seem to think they'll get to live in this world where they're using Vong and taken over. But you got to wonder, like, what some of these people are thinking. Like, even the most loathsome senators, like Borsk Fela, who, like, died heroically in um, Star by Star. He, he knew they could never live peacefully with the user and Vong. And yet some of them, like, because they seem to think they can. It's like, you wonder, like, these people are just obsessed with, like, staying alive no matter what. But, yeah, she she dies. She's really happy. She's realised that's not going to happen. Um, she's lived out of usefulness for them. Even uh, Yu and Vong are willingly turning each other. Like, you've got... So, um, Norman Or's hated. You know, he's the original Yu Vong villain from the first book. Like, he's hated by, like, the others because he is, he is failing repeatedly. Um, and then you've got a couple of new ones introduced. You've got the War Master Zvong La's dad, uh, Kal Vong La, I think it's pronounced. Um, yeah, he dies in a pretty spectacular sequence. Basically, in the giant space battle, they... The New Republic have tricked them to thinking they've got a Death Star-esque super weapon. They've even, like, spread rumours that they're building one. It does lead, like, the major part of their Yu Zanvong army to attack. And, yeah, finally, Yu Zanvong lose. <laughs> it's not the War Master, but, hey, it's his dad who's more experienced and possibly more dangerous. Um, he, he dies. They basically sacrifice the Lusankia ship. They don't see it coming. They effectively transfer all of its weapons to, like, the other ships. Um, they've moved all the crew off, so it's just the pilot... Uh, Captain or commander who manages to escape as well, and it's just crewed by droids because Lando's building new droids, which of course they badly need. Um, I know these were written in well, came out in 2002, were probably been written the same years. These are late 02, but they must have been aware of like the plans for the prequels, like how what the droids would do. But yeah, clearly they need droids or soldiers in this because there's only enough people to people to go around with. Uh, how they use them, they're like killing so many. But yeah, it's it's got a good ending. And um, part of this one doing the two in one because part one just kind of ended just like that. Luke's on Coruscant, they see what's happening. Some minor battles have been won, but nothing major. Book part two takes care of all of that. It's uh so much more happens, you know, they def Luke def defeats the Dark Jedi, Lord Nyax, they call him. Um Vicky Sesh, the Senate who worked with the Yuzan Vong is dead, the new War Master's uh, Master's dad, but he could easily be the main one. He's dead as well. Um about to, you know Wedge is the last one to leave bowling somehow takes out 10 uh yuzan vong pilots single-handedly which is awesome um yeah it's so great to see wedge get more to do he's one of the best characters and it's just got a good feel of an ending but yeah i do wonder what the series is gonna be like from now on and also the timeline because that it seems like three years have passed um I suppose this is a minor spoiler here um in some of the books it shows like the timeline and in here in one of these it even says like use this war like after Battle of Yavin covers covering five years, but then uh, it might cover more. <laughs> Another book shows it covering ten years, so this is only three. Like how can like what, seven books cover five to ten years? I don't know, but it makes sense. I mean, a lot of time has passed, but it's felt quite natural. I mean, unless you someone just temporary retreat for like five years or something, how's like it honestly going to last that long? Who knows? Maybe these are simply misprinted. So maybe the war really is like five years maximum, and three have passed. That's why two can go on, but. Yeah, lasting like 10 to 15, it doesn't seem possible, um, but we'll see. So yeah, that's it. That's my double review for these two books done. Uh, next up will be Traitor. I'm currently reading it. Probably won't be that long. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, really recommend it. But of course, don't read it until you read the others. And, and there will be other ones in the meantime. But yeah, that'll be up soon enough. And I'll see you next time. Again, please like, subscribe to the video. And until then.